Welcome to another episode of the Tobago House of Assembly's Post-Executive Council Media Briefing. This week, the Secretary for Education, Youth Affairs and the Sport, Iwi Cadet, and the Secretary for Community Development and the Culture, Dr. Denise Suefat Angus, addressed the media. Firstly, I'd want to um, treat with the um, with SCA and some and the results and some highlights. Um, let me begin by extending congratulations to all the, our, our students, um, teachers, and parents, and of course school supervisors and other technical persons who were involved in, in, in ensuring that we hosted this year's um, exam and of course in terms of distribution of results and in the days ahead, um, the registration and the placement of persons at our varying schools. Um, I would have indicated in an earlier press briefing the total number of students who registered um, for the 2016 edition was 854 students, um, which was 15 more than 2015, 437 boys, 417 um, girls. The top student, um, as we had highlighted before on our caravan on, on Tuesday, was from Scarborough Methodist School um, in the person of Shea Jahim Roman. Um, his total standard score was 239.655. Um, the, national, the top student at the national level um, in, in the entire country, their total standard score was 245.461. So let me just, just repeat that again. Um, the top Tobago student um, was 239.655 was their, his standard score. And the top student nationally, their standard score was 245.461. Um, this, of course, is just an, an evaluation of how this, the trend over the last couple of years. In, 20, in 2014, the gap between the top student in Tobago and the top um, student nationally was 5.233. Um, in 2015, it was 5.5, and this year it's 5.806. Um, this, of course, is in keeping with the, the division's um, st stated goal of ensuring that the, the gap between the the national, the top student nationally, and the Tobago student is no more than uh, than ten marks. So we want to, of course, extend um, congratulations um, to um, young Mr. Roman, his family, of course, the, the principal and staff at Scabo um, Methodist. Let me give you um, an idea. Just after this information, of course, would have been shared um, with the media previously, um, but the top um, the top twenty students um, and the schools that they came from um, is of course um, from Scarborough Methodist um, in terms of Mr. Roman and Gabriel Murray. Um, third place, Caitlin Ross from Scarborough RC, Aria Webster from Signal Hill Government, um, Rashana Gooding from Scarborough Methodist, Mika Bramble from Scarborough Methodist, um, Nathania Alain from Signal Hill Government, um, Kayla DeFreitas from St. Nicholas Private School, um, Ella Shaw from Buku Government School, Daniel Frank from Scarborough RFC School, Anya Alfred from Scarborough Methodist, Isabel Abraham from Buku Government School, Cassia Berkeley from Backlock Government School, um, Drew Kwashi from Buku Government School, um, Tamia Saunders from Scarborough Methodist, um, Rachel Smart from Scarborough SDA, um, Tanya Francis from Scarborough Methodist, Sydney Dikoto from Scarborough RFC, um, Lily Rose Broom from St. Nicholas Private School and Keatra Kerr from Speyside Anglican um, High School rounds out our top 20. Um, we are, uh, if you, an analysis of the, the schools would recognize that um, we have a, a nice mix of both schools, government schools or denominational schools and we have um, one um, private um, primary school in the mix and um, I think that is, is reflective of how the division has continued to support all of our, our primary schools ensuring that as people said that any of our schools that you attend to um, success can um, can be achieved so we want to congratulate all of our, our, our primary schools in the top 20 but of overall all of our schools our teachers all of our schools for the effort just some highlights of some of the subject areas, we are st we're still, of course, doing the analysis as Tobago district against all of the other, um, other districts. But just as it relates to the mean scores, 44% um, of our students um, scored above the national mean of 60% in mathematics, 
3% scored above the national mean of 55.5 in language arts, 46.3% um, scored above the national mean of 36.5 out of 50 in creative writing, 67.4% um, scored above the national mean of um, 91.0 in the creative, um, in the continuous assessment component. Um, our initial early analysis suggests that, of course, um, there is a, a need for us to continue to do work in the area of uh, mathematics and language arts. We continue to see good performances in um, creative writing. And of course, for, um, for 2017, there will be no um, continuous assessment component, and therefore, um, the necessary adjustment in how our students are prepared will, will have, to, have to be made. Um, overall, we would have set ourselves some targets to ensure that we had increases in those students scoring above 90%. And, and this year, for t in 2016, um, we had an increase over 2015 of 2.8% of students scoring above 90%. Um, so we have a total of about 33 students as opposed to 23 last year. In terms of scoring above 50%, um, we had 89.7% of our students in, in, 20, in 2015. This year we had 91.9%. In terms of under 30%, we would have indicated that our goal is to get that, um, that number, two years ago, to get that number down to, to zero. Um, last year we got it down to 0.7% of six students. This year we got it down to 0.1% of one student scoring below um, below 30%. As I said, we have some more analysis to do um, to ensure that, of course, we are prepared for the 2017 um, SA exam. But I think, um, although our initial analysis suggests strong performances, um, continued progress overall, um, reduction in the amount of students in, um, falling under 30%, um, but of course, need for further work among our, our male students, and in particular, our maths and, and English. I want to move on to some of the the camps that the division will be hosting, um, the Vacation Experience Program or Pan and Music Camp, um, which was first introduced in 2010. This program caters to children between 7 and 15 um, years of age. Um, these camps will um, commence on Monday 11th July and culminate on Thursday 28th July. Um, there will be four from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. daily. There will be four pan camps and the location for the pan camps uh, TN Tech New Eastside Dimension Pan Theatre in Bell Garden, Mason Hall Government Secondary, Bonacol Government School, and NLCB Bucanese Pan Theatre in Buku. Um, students in the pan camp will be instructed in um, steel pan playing, basic music literacy, and steel pan history and, and ethics. Our music camps will be held at Scarborough Methodist School and at Roxborough Anglican School. The trainees in the music camp will be taught basic music literacy and playing of the guitar, violin, the African rhythmic drum, and folk singing along with recorder and the quattro. Um, both camps, of course, will also have life skill elements, including um, remedial reading and writing, um, intercamp exchange visit, guidance, and counseling sessions. The library services will also have um, camps at Scarborough, Roxborough, and Charlotteville. The, these camps will cater for children from ages 6 to 11 and will be held from Monday, 18 July to Friday, 26th August from 9 a.m. to 12 um, p.m. daily. All right, the Roxborough Branch Library Camps will commence on Monday, 18 July, and will run until Wednesday, 10th August, and it's from 9 to 12 a.m. each day. Um, on different days, we'd have different kinds of activities. Information, of course, on the details will be sent out um, to the media. Registration for the camps closes on July 14th, and forms are available at our, our libraries. The Charlotteville Library Vacation Camp begins on Tuesday the 19th and runs until Thursday the 11th. The, the time frame for this camp is from 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Um, on a daily basis. I want to speak to the, our professional development for educators and, uh, and, and, and leaders within the school, our principals and other senior administrators. Um, this year, our uh, professional development program for both primary and secondary school principals and staff will, will run off during the month of July. Some of the areas to be covered will include financial management, um, instructional leadership, crisis management, 
ICT for, um, for school management and, and data-driven management are some of the areas that will be covered. In terms of, let me move on, um, in terms of our, just to provide an update on our 2016 school repair program, um, the division, as is customary, in, um, intends, of course, to, as usual, to use the July August period to undertake uh, repairs at our various schools. Um, the process, as it is to date, is that we would have, of course, done an evaluation and, and identified and prioritized works to be done all across um, our, all of our schools. Some of these works would have been um, identified based on an assessment of, of three consultants. Some would have come from, from the school management themselves. Some would have come from our visits that we have had to, this, um, to the schools over the last month or two. These works have now been prioritized. We are in the process now of developing our bills of quantities. We have also undertaken a pre-qualification process and the registration of our contractors. We are also in the process now of finalizing the tendering process. We intend, therefore, within the next week to seek the Executive Council approval for our 2016 edition of our school repair program. And of course, in a subsequent um, press briefing, we'll advise the, to the schools that um, works will be undertaken at and the total value of those works for 2016. Just to provide some updates on matters from the Department of Sport, um, our, the annual Olympic Youth Camp in conjunction with the Trinidad and Tobago Olympic Committee is scheduled to take place from Monday 11th to Friday 15th July at the Shaw Park um, Cultural Complex. Um, the theme and the focus for this year's camp is Educate, Empower and Evolve. The camp will accommodate 40 athletes between the ages of 11 and 14. Some of the teams to be focused on during the program over the one week will include pursuit of excellence, fair play, respect for others, joy of effort, balance between body, will and mind, um, doping in sport, media training, nutrition, sport psychology, exercise science, song, dance and sport. I'd also want to now move on to give an information on the annual um, YMCA swim camp, which will take place um, from the 11th to the 29th of July at the Colon um, facility. And this camp runs from 9 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. daily. The ages of, for the camp is 3 to 17 years. And of course, this, is, this camp is being hosted um, by the YMCA um, later down in to the end of July into August, the division will have its annual um, sports camp um, at various venues across the island, and, and, and we will provide information on that sports camp at a, at a later date. The Falcons Invitational Track and Field Meet um, takes place this Saturday, 9 July, at the Dwight York Stadium from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Um, the information that we have from Falcons, some of the athletes who will be in appearance will include Kishon Walcott, Shaquille Wave, Cleopatra Borrell, Akeem Stewart, um, Chelsea James, Akani Hislop, and some of the persons who are on the team that has qualified for a World Junior Championship and the NACAC under 23 um, in El Salvador. The cost of admission, $50 for adults and $20 um, for children. Um, we are happy that we have seen um, since the commissioning and the the opening of the Dwight York Stadium, we have had three, four successful, I should say, four successful meets in the, in the Falcons have had their Falcon games. They're now having the invitational meet. Zenit had their, re their relays. And we also had the National Junior Championship, so that we are seeing um, tremendous benefit coming from the laying of that new track at the, at the Dwight York Stadium. I want to extend congratulations um, to three athletes in the person of Zachariah Haynes, Ellen Jack, and Joel Roberts, who were selected to our national um, girls under 16 and under 15 um, basketball team um, to represent Trinidad and Tobago in the upcoming Caribbean Confederation Championship. The under 15 tournament um, will be held in Guyana from July 10th to 17th, and the under 16 will be held in Puerto Rico from August 17th to 21st. Um, this selection is a historical one since it's the first time that three players have been chosen at the same time from Tobago to represent the country at that, at that level. Let me also extend congratulations to Onella Walker and Malik Nelson of the Tobago YMCA Aquarius, who recently participated 
at the Caribbean Island Swimming Championship in the Bahamas. Um, Onella captured four medals, one gold and three bronze. And, of, um, and Malik, unfortunately, while he didn't medal, he, was, um, he performed um, creditably. The national swim team, the Trinidad and Tobago swim team, placed third overall. So again, I want to extend um, congratulations to Anella and, um, and, and Malik. I would like to state I want to commend the Heritage Committee and those of the uh, Festival Commission for the hard work that they would have put out in terms of creating this heritage for 2016 because they had to deal with cutting their budget significantly and coming up with a theme that certainly would fit in with our current challenges to date. Uh, after, after extensive review, they were able to uh, commit to hosting a heritage festival for 2016 uh, for approximately $10.5 million. I have been assured that with the current processes that they have put in place in terms of the procurement uh, and other activities that they should be able to uh, meet that budgetary uh, allocation that has been approved. I also want to put out there to the villages that we understand what your challenges would be at this time because some of the uh, as would have been said, some of the sponsors have not been able to give as much support as they would have in the past. But we want you to be rest assured that we are all in this together, uh, that the hardship is not just on you, not just on the sponsors, but on, upon all of us. And so we are asking all of them throughout the communities to be understanding and to, to know that it is out of adversity many times that we get creativity. So whilst we have to... Um, look at ways and means of cutting and contriving, we hope that it will not be at the cost of creativity. Uh, from the division's perspective, we have committed to ensuring that the villages receive the same grants that they would have last year, again, to ensure that they will be able to uh, have the level of creativity that we want as part of the exercise. Additionally, there's one new area where we would be collaborating with the Division of, with Division of Health and Social Services and the, uh, the swim call uh, regarding the launch of their recycling project. I have to say that I must congratulate the Division of Health and Social Services and swim call for this initiative. It certainly is, has been a long time in coming where we have to begin approaching uh, the recycling of our waste if we are to continue to live within a clean environment and keep our brand of clean, clean uh, green, uh, safe and serene. And therefore, this initiative they will be launching within the Heritage Festival, of course, in collaboration also with the uh, comprehensive economic development uh, secretariat going towards a green environment. And that would include now recognizing that we have, we will be having various bins on site at our various events where we are asking customers, the patrons, when you come in, please, when you have to throw your waste, ascertain which container is best uh, for the piece of waste that you have that you will be disposing. The next project I would like to speak about is the Fashion Vanguard project, which started, Fashion Vanguard is a project that we, the Division of Community Development and Culture, in collaboration with Vice Versa Limited, would have started where we had our designers showcase their uh, pieces in Japan and subsequently we held an, an international buyer's market at the Lowlands Community Center. And that was to promote the marketing of our Tobago designers and their pieces, moving them from off the, the runway of fashion into the corridors of commerce. And therefore that program has continued to grow where 
initially we have had our designers perhaps uh, export close to 200 pieces. The challenge became being able to satisfy the markets and that is why we would have had, uh, that is why we had, um, we had some research done into finding production houses outside of Tobago. That production house that we currently work with to satisfy the, the support for the designers is in Bogota, Colombia. To date, they have been able to supply samples for both Ted Arter and ICU designs. Camille's canned uh, work would soon be added to that. But I have to say that I'm heartened because I had the opportunity to see some of the pieces and definitely you could not tell the difference between the original design and, and those that have been produced. But the advantage to that is now, uh, the advantage to that is the fact that Ted Arter will now be able to provide and his customers and satisfy larger orders that he's now receiving on the international market. So we look forward to them building significantly on that area. And I just want to outline that in terms of the New York sales, we have, they have uh, interest uh, from the New York uh, market and those collections would be shortly delivered within the next four to six weeks. Uh, in addition, there are boutiques both in New Jersey and a brownstone in New York. Uh, they would have attended the uh, Vanguard Buyers Market in Tobago in October 20, 2015, and they have been quite excited about the designs and they are now awaiting uh, the products that they would have ordered. Two buyers in San Francisco have seen the images of completed accessory samples from the fall collection of the Tobago designers. And on June 9th, which should be within a day or so, the fall for the Tobago accessory samples will arrive in San Francisco and be shown to buyers. On June 15th, all line sheets for the clothing will be shown to buyers with physical samples arriving uh, that should have arrived on the 30th. And of course, in July and August, accessories from the fall for the Tobago designers will be displayed in two boutiques simultaneously for wholesale and retail orders out there. So it is quite an exciting uh, time for our designers uh, moving to the next level uh, of their development. But in addition to that, we recognize that there is an opportunity that fashion can become the platform upon which we also export the local music and film. And within the last two, to, uh, within the last two weeks, the division uh, through Fashion Vanguard would have launched uh, an initiative that took us further in terms of expanding the opportunities within the creative industry. Currently, the designers who would be exporting their products would now additionally be exporting a sample of Tobago music or film along with their clothing. That is done with a card issuing a barcode where persons, in addition to buying the clothing or the accessories, whatever they may be purchasing, comes automatically with a barcode where they can download either a sample of our music or a sample of our film from the, uh, from the clothing. That would assist the movement and I said the expansion of the industry as persons uh, are exposed to more of the Tobago culture through our, through purchasing a piece of uh, clothing or accessories. So we're looking forward to, to measuring that growth within that area. And that also gives the opportunity for our musicians to begin producing their music in a particular way. And also for our film makers, the short films, to become recognized on a, on a different scale. The 
Fashion Vanguard also would have undertaken a feasibility study to determine what are the other areas uh, that we need to create synergies with uh, and within the industry. And therefore, we had attending about 40 participants, not just in clothing, but also in craft, in uh, linen, bed linen, soap, and uh, candle making, all of these areas. And coming out of that feasibility study, we recognized there was a further need for training persons to become more comfortable within their businesses. As a result of that, a business development workshop was held and to, to introduce and have persons become more familiar in terms of the processes of operating a business and also in terms of marketing their business. Synergies were also created within the industry and certainly uh, that will con we will continue to facilitate that networking and be able to further expand the industry through that route. The, I must uh, state that the Bell Garden Multipurpose Center the residents of Bell Garden, we would have held a meeting with, with them and they are very pleased that shortly we will be breaking ground in the Bell Garden area in terms of building that new multipurpose centre. We, about a month ago, we met with the community and finalised the designs and it is currently within the uh, tendering process stage. So before the next financial year, we expect to be breaking ground on that Bell Garden multipurpose facility. And lastly, the traditional indigenous, uh, Tobago Indigenous Traditional Arts Academy is one that the division has continued to work with in terms of launching this academy. The reason that this, this academy is important to us is that we cannot preserve, effectively preserve the culture without standardizing the way in which we teach the culture. And effective preservation must come at an earlier age. And that is why one of the first uh, curriculum to be launched will be the oral traditions. We have a strong history of storytelling, speech band that has now crossed over into the spoken word. And it is important for our children to understand the, 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 that art form, understand how it could even assist them with their current studies. And in doing so, in so doing, we have more effective presentation. The teacher's training manual has already been completed and through the collaboration with the Education, Youth Affairs and Sports, we hope to uh, begin the program in being introduced at a primary school level within the school system uh, by, by September. That program is currently being reviewed and finalized. The accreditation will come from the Tobago Hospitality Institute that is the only institute on the island that has accreditation for teaching and therefore we would also be collaborating with them in terms of having that accreditation done. We have also had uh, requests from the United Kingdom for teachers to assist with some of the summer programs there in teaching uh, Tobago's culture. So this program would also assist in certifying our tutors here such that whenever the requests come for them to assist in other areas outside of here, that they go forward with the certification of the uh, Tobago Indigenous and Traditional Arts Academy and that, and that therefore continues the preservation of our uh, unique and indigenous Tobago culture. Thank you for staying with us for the Tobago House of Assemblies Post-Executive Council Media Briefing for the week ending July 9th, 2016.